Hi, I'm Jason and welcome to this week's Technique of the Week. Uh, in just a second, I'm gonna be showing you uh, how to fix this. Um, everybody screws up. I, uh, when we pulled this off, we poured this all monolithically. So we had our form on here and we had it raised up. So we poured the fire pit and this all at the same time. And trying to strip this, we busted off one of these noses. And, and this has happened to me before. And it's, uh, it's something that uh, if you fix it right, I've never had a problem with them coming, you know, coming back off. And today we're going to be showing you that process. If if something happens like this, you know, I'm um, a way to fix it. The first thing we're going to do to treat this is this is an overhang. It creates an overhang with this liner, so. I want it to, um, obviously we need something for it to grab onto. So what we do is run a couple tap cons into this. If you just use like a, a two and a half to, to three inch tap con is good enough. Um, I'll probably put three of them here and let them stick out, you know, so they're just barely uh, behind where the actual other concrete's gonna go. To be able to check this to make sure I'm not out too far, I can kind of dry fit this in here how it's gonna go. Um, and I can see that I can let it come out just a little bit more. And what that does is just helps that, that all lock into that and gives it a little bit more support. The next step in the process is putting a bonding agent on it. Um, today we're gonna be using uh, our SureBond uh, 100. Uh, it's just an acrylic uh, bonding resin. And what we're gonna do is paint brush this on this concrete here and that'll ensure that the other material that we put on there bonds to this concrete. And that just gives us another uh, extra insurance, you know, um, that it's gonna make a good bond to this. This is the form liner that we used to create this profile. So this was in here like this. So I'm gonna use that same piece to create my overhang again. What's nice is usually this fits tight because that's the reason it broke out in the first place because it was too tight. So. You can see that's going to create that lip that then this can set back on. Okay, I think we're ready to start mixing. We're going to mix up some just regular color hardener that we used on the top of the cap. Um, so it, we're not going to sift. We're not going to sift it. I know in the previous episodes, we've sifted this to do the faces. Now we'll sift it after this sets up and is hard when we go do the final brush on it. But just to, to create this, we want the big sand in it because we're making a bigger patch. So I'm gonna dump that in there. And we're just gonna add water to this. Um, the color hardener is so Portland cement rich, um, it gets extremely hard on its own. It doesn't need like polymer or anything in it. Um, we've already brushed a polymer on there to get the good bond. About right about like that, you know, where, it, where it's not um, coming apart. We don't want it too fluid because we want it to be able to uh, stick in there better and to be able to push it and kind of uh, keep it in place. So that's probably good right there. If you didn't use color harder, this would be a little bit more tricky because it's gonna be hard to match that color perfect. But for, if you didn't use color harder, what I would probably do is take like a, uh, get your integral color that you use on the job, get some um, uh, overlay, like gray overlay, um, or like even a wall mix, and try to mix a little bit of color into that and use that to put, um, to make your patch. And then you'll have to mix up like a, probably like a little slurry to go on the whole thing. Um, again, that's one of the big reasons why we use color hardener because it's so easy to fix stuff like this, you know, because we're gonna match the color perfect. You're not even gonna be able to tell that we did this. To get an even better bond to this, um, I'm gonna take some of this color hardener on a brush. I'm gonna try to just brush it into that primer too. If I just take this stuff and start packing it in there, we're not sure that it's all making good contact with this rough material back here. The next thing I'm gonna do is just take this, I'm just gonna start putting it, putting it in here. It's your lucky day today because you're gonna get two tips today for the price of one. Um, if you have any WD-40, usually we keep this in our trailer or um, in my step finishing box. Um, or detail box, and I'm gonna just put a little bit of this will work if you just put a little bit of that on there. 
Um, it works good for a, a form release. I'm just gonna brush it around on here. If you're in a pinch, that it works really good. So the next thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and push this liner into this to kind of create that same uh, texture. Uh, I have overfilled this. That way when I make sure that this makes good contact, I can kind of push it in almost uh, like using it like a vertical stamp to where um, when I put it in here, I can just kind of push on this and it'll create you know a similar uh, profile. Okay, so the next thing is just to take like your uh, margin trowel. I'm just gonna scrape the top, the high spots off there. Where the two meet, I'm just gonna kind of feather that in. We don't want a, a big gap there, so I wanna make sure that that kind of blends. And then I'm gonna do that on both sides. I even use my fingers if I... Just wanna make sure there's not a gap there. Okay, now we wait. We wait till this gets hard enough um, that we can take this off. I would say, you know, this color hardener, it sets up pretty fast and it depends on the temperature and stuff, but I would say like in, oh, probably like two hours or so, we'll be able to, to take that off. Well, that's it for this week's Technique of the Week. Um, thanks for joining us. And, you know, there's gonna be times in your jobs where things don't go like you thought they were gonna go, but just just always know that there's, uh, there's a way to fix it. It reminds me of a time when I was in uh, Florida and we were at my very first decorative concrete convention that I ever, ever went to. And uh, Tom Ralston was there speaking, great contractor, you know, out of California. Um, and there's an old, old quote that he said um, that if necessity is the mother of all invention, then desperation's got to be the father. And that's how this happened to me the first time. You know, we, we did this probably, you know, eight to 10 years ago. Um, this happened for the first time to me and you figure out a way to fix it. Instead of tearing this whole thing out, um, you figure out ways that you can fix it and ways that, um, you know, that, that'll, that'll help you get, get the job done and get paid. So um, remember, there's always a way out. You just have to look for it. So um, thanks a lot for joining us this week on Technique of the Week. Uh, we appreciate it. If, uh, you know, please go and, and um, subscribe if you haven't yet at www.techniqueoftheweek.org. Um, thanks for watching and have a great day.